Hello, welcome to Anu's classroom. In this session, we will be talking about the attitude measurement and the various scales that we use in order to, uh, what you can say, analyze or in order to start analyzing our data as well as in order which uh, could help us in preparing our questionnaires in order to collect primary data because since we will not be taking up big, big topics at the national level, generally we will be taking up small topics and that too we will be sampling them. So, we will generally be opting more on the primary data rather than the secondary data for our project research purposes, right? So, how we should be measuring uh, the various responses, what scales we can use for uh, categorizing our respondents' responses, all those things we will try to find out in this session. So, some of the topics that we will be talking about are what do you mean by the various, uh, what do you mean by attitude, attribute and belief? What are the issues in attitude measurement? How we scale attitudes? Uh, we will talk about the Gutman scale. Thurston's equal appearing interval scale, the semantic difference scale. We will also be talking about the Likert scale and the QSOT technique. Multidimensional scaling and how we will select the appropriate attitude measurement scale for our research problems and what are a few of the limitations of attitude measurement scales. So, let us get started. So, each object or a product or a service is believed to be composed of a certain characteristic which will fulfill certain needs of its user, right? Like for example, uh, why do you choose Apple? Maybe it is a security feature. Maybe it is something else. Maybe it is a design, the camera. So, it, each object or a product, it will have a certain characteristics which is appealing to us, which will fulfill uh, some of our needs. So, these needs could either be psychological, physical or even social in nature. These characteristics of the object that is under consideration is what is called as its attributes. Okay, and the term belief actually refers to the judgments that are made by a user regarding the object possessing certain attributes or not. Like for example, you take uh, say Redmi, you might have a certain belief about this particular brand that maybe it will overheat. So that is your belief. Maybe that particular model or that particular unit that you will get might not even overheat, but you might have a certain a thing in your mind which you your belief that this thing is going to be like that right so that is belief and the term attitude refers to the predisposition or the mental state of individuals or users towards a product or idea or attribute of an object it also implies the mental readiness to act in a particular manner and also influences our behavior towards that particular object or group or that organization or that person under consideration so that is attitudes attributes and beliefs i got you got i hope you got a understanding of how these things are uh, different so what is the problem uh, what are problems could come up when we are trying to measure this attitude especially so measurement actually implies the process of obtaining an information which can be subject to analysis correct so attitude measurement will relate to the process of measuring an individual's attitude towards an object or a product or a service so, in attitude measurement, the primary aim of the researcher is in, in measuring the state of mind of that respondent. So, it could include many factors like their awareness, attitude, decision process, all these things. So, the first step before we get into attitude measurement exercise is we have to select the relevant attribute of the object that is under investigation. Like if you are trying to... Um, what you can say, what attribute can we give an example of? Um, like for example, uh, let's say, how many guys, of you guys are aware that in Kerala, KCB is doing an e-kiran uh, project wherein they give subsidies to people for installing solar panels above their, on their roofs, right? So there are a lot of, um, what you can say, vendors who do that. So one of the uh, examples I can think of on um, attitude measurement would be that you are asking your respondents what they think about uh, say ABC firms solar rooftop panels or their service so that is a attitude problem that we are trying to measure here okay so the first step is to understand or uh, make sure what attribute are you going to measure the next important issue is who is going to be measured okay and the third major issue is the choice in data collection and measurement techniques. How will we frame the data? How will we, uh, what you can say, club it together? How are we going to, uh, because a lot of continuous data, uh, it depends upon the kind of uh, problem that we are trying to solve. Sometimes we'll have to categorize it. Sometimes we can work with continuous data also. So how exactly are we going to do all these things? All these are issues with 
measuring the attitude so how do we scale it so there are various scales with which we can measure or scale attributes we have the nominal scale which simply allows us or the categorization of responses into a number of mutually exclusive categories and there is no relationship between the categories that means there is no ranking or order okay then we have the ordinal scale which allows the respondents to rank some alternatives by some common variables we have the interval scale which is has an arbitrary zero point with numbers placed at equally appearing intervals at, and the most commonly we use the nominal and ordinal type of scales for attitude measurement but uh, we also sometimes will have to uh, attempt or treat them or convert them into interval scales so as to make the data more amenable to statistical operations don't worry if you guys are still uh, finding it difficult uh, let's move ahead in this video and if you still have uh, issues with understanding these three scales let me know in the comment section below i'll try my best to um, you know mm, what you can see make sure that uh, you guys are clear about these most probably it will get uh, it will go by the end of this video so let us uh, move forward and see the various scales of attitude measurement or the models of attitude measurement. So the first one we'll talk about is the Gutman scale. So this is a deterministic attitude measurement technique and the underlying assumption is that each statement has a very perfect relationship of one type or another with the particular dimension of the attitude being investigated. So it is sim uh, and it is mostly applied to dichotomous data that is it will either have a value of yes or no or one or zero agree or disagree okay it will there will not be any in between answer here it is a single ordinal scale for the assessment of the attribute from which the original observations may be reproduced it is also called as cumulative scaling or scalogram analysis and the and it measures how much of a positive or negative attitude a person has towards a particular topic like for example do you like paneer yes no do you like uh, mutton yes no something like that okay so the next is the thund uh, Thurston's equal appearing interval scale. So in this scale, we are interested in scaling the respondents and not the statements. The first step is in the scale construction is to scale the attitude statements along the attitude continuum. And this is done by asking some judges to evaluate the items along some continuum. Okay, so the first one scales are prepared with an odd number of positions and that odd number is usually 11. The scale has some drawbacks like the time required being fairly high okay so first we have to collect then we'll have to get it uh, what you can say um what you can say uh, arranged um so it is a fairly time consuming method of measurement and the influence of the scale positions by the attitudes of the judges are also there so no information on the degree or intensity of agreement with the different items are also there it is used to measure the attitudes of people with one being the least favorable to the concept and 11 being the most favorable to the concept the next is the uh, semantic differential scale so the term semantic differential scale actually refers to any collection of rating scales that are anchored by bipolar objectives so it is a very flexible approach to obtaining measures of attitudes and the object that is rated is called as the concept and almost anything can be rated using this scale. Normally, we use this uh, semantic differential scale based on a seven point rating scale for each of a number of attributes relating to the research topic. The extreme points will uh, represent the bipolar adjectives with the central category be, uh, representing the neutral. So one, sorry, zero will be zero and seven will be the extreme ends and maybe four, I believe four will be the middle. So the preparation of this semantic differential scale also for uh, for a particular study re uh, requires expressing the things that could be used to describe the object and serve as a bet for attitude formation in terms of positive and negative statements. So the negative phrase is sometimes put on the left side of the scale and sometimes on the right. So depending upon the questionnaire how he or that researcher how they seem fit they could either put the negative statements on the left or on the right then another the next one that is the summative model Likert scale is a very 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 favorite topic for uh, researchers this is something which we use most of the time Likert scale is a psychometric scale commonly involved in the research 
and employees quest and is employed in questionnaires it is the most widely used approach to scale responses in survey researches it is uh, in its final form the likert scale is a five or even seven point scale which is used to allow the individuals to express how much they agree or disagree with a particular statement so the likert scale typically provides five possible answers to a statement or a question and allows the respondents to indicate either their positive to negative strength of agreement or strength or feeling regarding that particular question or statement so whenever you guys would have a uh, attended any kind of survey even on youtube you will sometimes get skip survey one survey questionnaire comes up right even there it's most often you the likert scale is used wherein you are try, trying to tell whether you uh, feel this content is uh, suitable for you uh, how suitable it is very unlikely that you will watch it again or moderate high very high extreme uh, cases like that okay so that is the Likert scale it is a fan favorite among researchers you guys will also be mostly using this Likert scale only most of the time okay so that is the Likert scale the next is the q sort technique or qst which is also defined as a modified rank ordering procedure in which stimuli are placed in an order which is significant from the standpoint of a person that is operating under the specified conditions okay so the q sort scaling is a rank order scaling technique wherein respondents are asked to sort the presented objects into piles based on similar similarly uh, similarity according to a specified criteria like uh, preference attitudes perception like that so the and this q sort technique is a very much faster and less tedious for subjects than paired comparison measurements it also forces the subjects to confirm to quotas at each point of the scale so as to yield a nominal or quasi nominal distribution and the utility of this q sort in especially comes in the marketing research uh, is to drive clusters of individuals who display similar preferences thus representing a unique market segment the objective of q sort is thus intensive study of individuals so in case all these things are going on top of your head don't worry uh, and most of these things i as i said like it is the likert scale that we use most often the remaining things you should have an idea of it from your term and examination point of view but from your project point of view hardly i i would say that we use any other kind of scale it is the likert scale that we mostly use so don't worry then comes the multi dimensional scaling so it is a term that we use to describe a group of analytical techniques that are used to study attitudes especially those relating to perceptions and preferences these techniques attempt to identify the object attributes that are important to the respondents and to measure their relative importance the major application of these multi dimensional scaling is in managerial research and comes especially in marketing research areas like advertising market segmentation vendor evaluations and things like that and the last scale Uh, so the last topic that we are going to discuss today is how we can select the appropriate attitude measurement scale and few of its limitations so almost every technique can be used for the measurement of any component of attributes sorry attitudes but at the same time they are not suitable for all purposes so the selection of scale actually depends on the stage and size of the research project and consist and the cost of developing the and implementing the instrument that is will be used for this an uh, measurement the reliability and validity of this instrument and the statistical analysis necessary or uh, what you can say influence the selection of the attitude measurement scale so generally the thurston scale or the q sort or the semantic differential scale are preferred for the preliminary investigations whereas the likert scale is used for item analysis and for specific attributes the semantic differential scale is very appropriate but overall the semantic differential scale is the most simple in concept and the results obtained are comparable with more complex one dimensional methods also and the limitation the main limitation of these tools for attitude measurement is the emphasis on describing attitudes rather than predicting behavior so this is primarily because of a lack of models that describe the role of attitudes in behavior so i hope you guys got a general idea of the various attitude measurement scales uh, thank you so much in case you are having doubts further doubts do let me know about them in the comment section below i'll try my best to uh, what you can say solve all of those 
Thank you so much for being with Anu's Classroom. I hope to see you all in the next session. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.